Hello, good morning. Um, uh, thank you all so much for coming uh, uh, to WordCamp and to, uh, to this talk. Um, I wanted to start by uh, thanking a few folks without whom um, my work uh, with LinFest wouldn't have been possible. Um, the, the LinFest Institute overall, Jim Fried, Friedlich, uh, uh, Bert Herman, um, Bert especially provided a lot of feedback uh, early on in, um, in my report that was very, very helpful to me. Um, and to uh, uh, Margaret Schneider, the editorial director at Alley, who proofread uh, the entire thing, um, netting me with a Google Doc that had like 1,700 comments in it. Um, and Margaret uh, uh, wishes that she could be here, um, uh, but she was extremely helpful uh, here. Um, I also wanted to uh, uh, thank um, Jerry Lindfest and, and remember him for a moment. Uh, he passed away earlier this week. He was the uh, uh, the founder of the Lindfest Institute, and um, was an extraordinarily humble man uh, to the extent that he uh, 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 didn't want the Lindfest Institute called that. Uh, uh, and um, he really believed that, uh, oh, come on, my laptop's not gonna go to sleep here, there we go. Um, he really believed that newspapers are a uh, a civic good, like um, like museums or libraries, and so and I think it was 2014 donated the 2016, 14, 15, a few years ago he donated the uh, uh, holdings of um, the Philadelphia Media Media Network Media News uh, to uh, a nonprofit organization, and um, thus the Inquirer, uh, Philadelphia Inquirer and Daily News became the uh, first me Metro Daily newspapers in the country to be owned by. A, uh, a nonprofit. Um, so his example is uh, uh, inspiring to me, um, and I encourage you to uh, learn about him uh, if you haven't already. So I do want to talk about what happened this week. <laughs> um, uh, any, any level of familiarity with this story? Anybody has seeing this for the first time? Um, everybody has seen this. I don't believe that. Uh, so uh, uh, I accidentally made news this week. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mean to. Um, I was doing what I normally do on a Sunday evening, which was uh, reading and posting on Hacker News. Um, anybody else sometimes do that on a Sunday evening? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some nods. Um, and uh, there's a thread titled, what's the most unethical thing you've ever done as a developer? Um, I, I searched my brain. I, uh, I listed my crimes and I picked the worst, um, which is that in, uh, in 2012, uh, Jared Kushner, who was, uh, was is um, the owner of the New York Observer, uh, emailed me to ask me to delete an article. And I got uh, requests uh, from him through others uh, in the a couple years before and after that too. Um, the article in particular was uh, uh, it's a stupid article, it's like, uh, I mean, it, stupid. An important article uh, in its way, but it wasn't like uh, moving the market or anything. It was that Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, um, had purchased a brownstone. Um, that's it. Uh, and here's the brownstone that he purchased. Um, and uh, Kushner was, I, I, I surmise, friends with Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, and um, some pressure somewhere uh, uh, caused Kushner to believe that that article should be deleted um, from the, uh, uh, the newspaper on account of the um, risks to the personal safety of Silver and his family. Um, so I deleted it. Uh, and um, I know now that I, I shouldn't have. Um, and uh, I want to tell you a, uh, uh, that I hope facing the same request from an editorial organization or from a, a from any part of the organization other than editorial, uh, you shouldn't do it. And if editorial asks you to do it, you should ask why and, and keep asking why. Um, ultimately, probably the solution to this is a, uh, 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 some you know, append-only version of, uh, of news software. Um, WordPress doesn't work like that as, as it stands, so we'd have, to, uh, we'd have to have sort of a news mode or some other um, append-only record. Um, there are ideas to do this with, uh, with blockchain. Um, some of them are promising. Um, uh, 
Anyway. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll not go quite, quite that far. Um, so the, uh, 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 I promise this ties to my talk um, and, and in a couple of important ways that I am going to, uh, I'm going to get back to. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, on Monday morning, um, I have an email at my, my work email address from uh, BuzzFeed reporter Stephen Perlberg. It said, I saw your comment on Hacker News. I would like to talk to you about it. Will you talk to me? And I thought about it for like eight seconds. I was like, sure, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to. Because uh, the truth is, like, this isn't something I, was, I, was, I had ever really planned on being secretive about, it, at least not, not after, um, um, you know, uh, uh, really, uh, essentially, I think I went on the record on this. In um, 2016, the New York, uh, New York Magazine wrote a profile of, uh, of Kushner when it became apparent he was going to take a White House role. And um, they, they called me to, to sort of just ask about what it was like working with him. And I, I told them the story, but they didn't print it. So I had this sort of sense in my head that it wasn't news. Um, or that if it was news, it was like, you know, of all the other terrible things going on, this is just sort of like a little terrible thing. Um, so he calls me, and my first question is, uh, is this really news? And he was like, yeah, it's news. This is great. Uh, so I, I talked to him, um, and, and then I got off the phone. I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, uh, no more. Um, and and then, then this story went live, and I, I read it. I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. Um, and I, I, I tweeted about it. Uh, 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 and I, then I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm really going to just forget about this and get back to work. Um, but then it like, just sort of blew up uh, and uh, went all over the internet uh, uh, really pretty quickly. Um, something like 16 news outlets picked it up. Um, and I, I spoke again on, on Tuesday of this week to the Washington Post. Um, and that, that's, after that, I really said, like, from now on, it's just no comment. Because um, I, I, I don't have time for you know, repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, okay, so back to the narrow path for lo local news. This does connect, I swear. Um, the, thing that, the thing that really struck me in all of this was the, the uh, sort of ringing difficulty of uh, 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 having a publisher in an administration that uh, has condemned the press as the enemy of the people. Um, the press is not the enemy of the people. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't have to stand here and say that, uh, but that's, that's the environment that we're in. Um, and and I, I also think that uh, uh, the press not being the enemy of the people should sort of, sort of be at the top of our agenda. Even as news technologists, this should sort of be at the top of our agenda. I think it's more important than the open web. I would love to talk about the open web, but first, I would like to talk about guaranteeing that we have uh, First Amendment protections to do our work and to support the journalists who rely on us uh, to, to spread the news. Um, so that, in part, was uh, sort of like, you know, why be secretive about this one sort of editorial sin um, that, uh, uh, that, that, that Jared made. Um, I have sort of a second quibble. Uh, with the open web, now we're kind of moving towards the, the narrow path, um, which is, uh, uh, this is a one quote, but it's indicative of sort of a, a line of reasoning about uh, uh, news organizations vis-a-vis -vis Twitter and Facebook, or Facebook and Google. Uh, I'll read it. What will happen when the Times and New Yorker and other pubs own up to the simple fact that they are just as guilty as Facebook of leaking their readers' data to other parties for God knows what purposes besides interest-based advertising? And this is from Doc Searles, a, a, a really well-known internet critic um, and a uh, important voice in open source software and um, in some ways uh, in, in the, the movement towards an open web. Um, just as guilty as Facebook. I don't, think, I don't think anybody can be just as guilty as Facebook right now. Uh, come on. <laughs> um, OK, maybe the, with the qualifier of leaking their readers' data to other parties. Um, I don't really think that the Times gave their reader data to Cambridge Analytica. Did they? Did I miss that? So there's this, there's this sort of like slur against, against like internet attention-based businesses overall uh, that, that I think is really uh, 
uh, really harmful, um, unintentionally so, but, but harmful to uh, sort of the, um, you know, not just the revenue models, but also sort of the core press freedoms here. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention um, that, uh, that photo of, um, of uh, the Abraham Lincoln quote. That's from the, uh, I'll go back to it. Um, uh, Anybody recognize that, where, where this engraving is? Tribune Tower Lobby. Yep. The Tribune Tower Lobby uh, uh, slash something something condominiums now um, uh, is uh, uh, just like, like I, I, I've been there a few times, um, and I, I, I took this picture a couple years ago when they knew that they were, uh, were going to leave their, their headquarters. Um, uh, I, I don't think I could go to work there every day. I think I would just choke up walking through the lobby because it's like, in, like inscription after inscription about how important a free press is. Uh, uh, it's sort of like, like, uh, like when I go to the museum in Washington, D.C., it's just sort of like uh, very emotional. Um, yeah, it's a shame that they, uh, they sold it. Um, Okay, back to this. Uh, so my question about the open web is, uh, would we rather have slow websites and walled gardens or a society without journalism? I would rather have slow websites. Sign me up for the slow websites if it means that we get to keep the journalism. Sign me up for no internet if it means that we get to keep the journalism. That's, that's why I do what I do. Uh, and and I, I believe that it's why a lot of us do what we do. Um, I don't, I don't think that it has to be, there, there has to be this dichotomy. I don't, think, I don't think we have to say like, oh yeah, we definitely are going to have slow websites um, if we're going to serve journalism on the internet for uh, some um, variety of reasons. But uh, we, we got here over, like slowly over time for reasons of um, the news organizations wanting to continue paying their journalists. Uh, and. Um, and it is the likes of Facebook and Google that have, that have brought us to this place of, uh, of needing to have slow websites laid in with ad tech. Um, so it's, it stings a little. It stings a little when Google says, make your websites faster. It's like, we could have faster websites if we didn't have to have all this freaking ad tech. We have all this ad tech because you blew up the market. Like, it's, <laughs> there's, this sort of, there's this sort of train to, uh, uh, the history of, of the attention economy, um, I don't want to spend too much time on it, uh, uh, although I, I wrote pages on it. I, I, could, I could do that for the rest of my life. It's so fascinating. Um, and there's a, this great book. If, if uh, uh, Anybody here read this book? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. If, if you are, are looking for... Uh, 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 a history of sort of how advertising um, came to, to dominate news media. Um, this is a great place to start. So I, I learned firsthand a pro problem of the attention economy this week. Ooh, um, I'm not going to stand there anymore. Uh, that. Uh, uh, and uh, this is specifically a problem with national news, but you see it a little bit in, in local news. Um, this is a CNN Money uh, article about the, the thing that I did earlier this week. Um, they embedded my tweets. Uh, good, good SEO. Uh, the, um, they didn't contact me for comment. They, they just it's like sort of like rewrote the BuzzFeed article, um, dropped in some of my tweets, and got comment, I think, from uh, uh, maybe one or two other people. Um, now, I. <laughs> I guess they're doing some reporting here uh, through Twitter, um, but it wasn't just CNN. It was like like 16 other other news organizations essentially rewriting the same story over and over again. Do we need that? Is that fulfilling some information need of our society? Yeah. Is that fulfilling some information need of our society to have 16 versions of the same story? Probably not. So I I. Uh, 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 that's why I think local news is, is so interesting as a topic to me, um, because we're, uh, we're able to tell stories that aren't told 16 times over and over again. Um, although it does, it does certainly happen in, in local markets where a TV station will rip off something from another TV station. Um, 
So if you take away one thing um, from, uh, from these 45 minutes and, and from my work, it's the uh, success for local news requires both local equity and also an economy of scale, which are difficult things to have at the same time. And I'm going to spend most of the rest of the time talking about that. Um, but in brief, uh, local equity means that you're, you're reliant on audience support. I'm, I'm being a little loose with, uh, with the word equity, um, which is, I think, you know, commonly understood to mean direct ownership. And there are some cases where direct ownership could be a possibility. Uh, but at minimum, you need to have buy-in. You need to have like some degree of investment, financial, uh, emotional, time, energy, from your audience. Um, and you need to own the relationship with your audience. Um, you need to leverage some extent of scale technology and operations. Uh, as, as developers, uh, how does this resonate with, with, with you that uh, you feel like you spend your entire life like re-implementing the same article page design, the same hamburger menu? Yeah? Okay. Ambivalent nods, I'll take it. Um, and you need to vertically integrate production and distribution. This is a little complicated, so I'll come back to that. Uh, and you need to be able to weather a storm. Uh, you know, one bad thing happening to your news organization shouldn't wipe you out. Uh, so there's, there, there needs to be some mechanism for resiliency in, in local news. I saw a sign um, when I was, uh, 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 well, not, not a sign. I was walking by somebody's, somebody's desk in a newsroom, not a, not a local newsroom. Um, uh, and written on their whiteboard, uh, was this. If it doesn't make money or attract page views, don't do it. I think that they were an audience development. Um, I think that this is a, a good start, but I think you could simplify it. Uh, just say, if it doesn't make money, don't do it. And attracting attention is great. Getting page views is, 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 is good. Having your readers read your stuff is good. But if you can't track that with, you know, with some reasonable metrics and some reasonable expectation of return, to your bottom line, um, then, then why are you doing it, right? So there's this like this chase for eyeballs that uh, uh, I, I think we're accustomed to because of the attention economy, um, because we are uh, uh, used to needing to just serve as many ads as possible to uh, as as many readers as possible. Um, if we can break out of that mindset and instead just sort of look at what moves the needle, uh, I think that we'll make better decisions about what happens in our, our news organizations. By extension, um, and this, this is uh, easy advice, but hard, very hard to implement um, because we, we have built essentially a history of readers expecting to get local news for free. Um, uh, I think you need to deliver an uh, uh, indispensable product. Um, and you know, moving behind a paywall, uh, or, the, or the, the sort of like discourse of like paywalls in general, um, I, I think doesn't help us a lot here. You know, when we're moving content behind a paywall, we're taking something away. Uh, and we need to find a way to, to make it look better than taking something away, that we are, we are giving you, um, our audience, these great things because you are now paying for our content. Um, uh, and in that sense, like, like paywalls are about restriction, but memberships are about inclusion. Um, and you don't even necessarily have to have, and I guess that's the difference between mem you know, a membership program and a paywall, is that you don't even have to have a paywall in order to have a successful membership program. Um, the Guardian, I think, is a, a, a pretty famous example of a, a news organization that uh, is, has become more reliant on, on memberships while also providing open access to their journalism. Um, but that's a, I think that would be a very difficult model to replicate in, uh, uh, in, in, in the context of local news. Um, I also think that local news needs to get better at engaging their audience's uh, ideas, not just their attention. Um, you know, if it's, and, and it, how we have taken so long to get to this point is a little beyond me. Um, 
But the, the notion of like engaging eyeballs in advertising has always struck me as a little bit like weirdly anatomical. Um, you know, we need to engage users whole brain and, ha and recruit them to help us do our jobs. And as technologists, there are things that we can do. There are ways, there are ways that we can build our websites. There are, ways, there are tools that we can integrate. Um, I mean, there's a, a, a whole sort of uh, st news media startup sector uh, designed around this problem of, uh, of, of listening to your audience um, that I think is only going to grow in importance. Um, also, uh, uh, your revenue strategy should be uh, clear from your user experience. Um, this is, I think, one of the toughest problems uh, facing technology for local news at this point um, in that News, news products are essentially trying to, trying to sell themselves twice, once to advertisers and once to readers. Um, and I, I believe and I, I hypothesize that, uh, that that's detrimental to the, uh, 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 detrimental to their chances of converting readers to subscribers. So simply put, if you show display ads, you're gonna lower your chances of, of converting readers to, uh, uh, subscription. I think that there have been some experiments done in-house around this, uh, but the amount of data that's out there is pretty narrow. Um, uh, one kind of interesting um, public study that was that was done um, was uh, done by Pandora, the radio streaming service. And what they found is that um, if they promised, essentially, if they pro as part of the subscription package, if they tell you like we're going to take away the advertising if you buy a subscription, um, that that boosted their conversion rate. Um, which isn't isn't the most useful, you know, idea for for us because the uh, 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 most news organizations don't don't really do that. Is, there are some that change the ad experience, whether you're logged in or logged out. But it is a signal that that, that puts up stating the obvious: readers don't really like advertising. Um, so this is the the Star Tribune. It's an article page on the Star Tribune. Um, this is I colorize the parts of the page uh, by um, kind of what they're doing. Uh, so this top strip here is recirculation. There's a little bit of marketing, maybe, you know, login, subscriptions, and here's uh, the uh, editorial, right? I wasn't logged in. Um, I'm visiting their site. Uh, uh, this is their chance to sort of pitch me on why I should become a, a subscriber. Um, and they are using a very fractional bit of their real estate to make that pitch. Um, this is a... Uh, uh, Boston Globe story. They do a little bit better, um, and they have they've done a lot of experimenting with uh, 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 calls to action and subscriptions. Um, so they have a whole bar down at the bottom, um, and then uh, uh, the bulk of the top header is kind of dedicated to subscription marketing. Um, here's Netflix, um, which is a favorite uh, uh, sort of point of aspirational comparison for new news products. Uh, uh, along the lines of, um, you know, if anybody here heard like the general concept, like Netflix for news, um, like we're gonna, we're just gonna bundle everything, and you're gonna pay, you know, nine bucks a month or twelve bucks a month or something, and you're gonna get it all. I, I don't really think that's how Netflix works. Uh, <laughs> Netflix, Netflix is paying for and producing a ton of its own content, and when it buys shows out of syndication, you know, they're kind of good forever. Or, you know, like Friends has some shelf life that's well beyond its, like, 2002 series end. Um, whereas news articles from 2002 are um, valuable really only from, like, a research perspective. Um, it's good to have them there, but you, you can't kind of continuously extract value from this, uh, uh, from, from this archive. Um, Anyway, here's how they do it. It's all marketing, except for that little chunk of editorial there, like in case you happened upon the House of Cards logged out landing page um, and you wanted to know about House of Cards, here's some information. Otherwise, sign up for Netflix already. Um, yeah, a tiny bit of editorial. Um, so local news really needs to not play the attention game. Um, 
you know, we're, we're losing when we play it, and we're losing in more ways than one. It's a big part of what makes our website slow, and hopefully we can kind of kill both of these problems at once. We can convert to audience support and be better citizens of the open web, because if we're not tracking you to sell your data to advertisers, we don't have to track you at all, and that's great. Um, but, but making that conversion is, is I, I think, uh, again, easier said than done. Um, I, again, this is just a hypothesis, and it would be, be difficult to, to um, know more about this without a really large-scale study. Uh, but I, I, I really think that, that news could do better by their communities by uh, you know, cutting out the whole, like, 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 oh, we're so important to that, the health of the community, we're, or the, uh, you know, um, holding government accountable is, is really great, but it's not personal. If you look at uh, uh, the way that, um, that, like, healthy lifestyle brands communicate with individual uh, customers, it's all about uh, individual empowerment. Like, we're, you know, we're making your life better because because you can work out at this fancy gym and buy chia seeds. Um, and I, I, you don't get a lot of that from news media. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about, uh, uh, I, mean, I think that there's even some, some sort of fear. Like, if we weren't here, what would happen? Um, and while that's true, and I'm, I, know, I, I confess I'm afraid, I think that should be obvious, uh, I, I don't know how well that resonates with, uh, with potential customers. Again, just a hypothesis, an idea. Um, here's a tricky one um, that we deal with at, at, at Alley pretty frequently. Um, when you synchronize your products, uh, your weakest product will define your whole business. Um, another way of putting that is uh, if, you, um, if you have a holistic workflow for a newspaper that involves digital assets flowing into the print edition, uh, your website is going to come to be defined by the constraints of the print edition. Even if that's not, even if that's not the sort of required pattern, even if it's possible to do more on the web than you, know, you could export into the print CMS. We've seen over and over again that the, uh, uh, the um, you know, minimum viable thing for the most restrictive product is what's going to rule the day 80% of the time, which is how you end up with uh, you know, 300 word articles with one picture um, being the most common, common kind of news on a, on a newspaper website. So when I talk about economies of scale um, being a core requirement for local news, um, I'm talking about things like, uh, like content management. This is the problem of, uh, you know, we're implementing the Sam Hamburger menu over and over again. Um, we're, uh, we're implementing a custom workflow for every publisher because every publisher is, is special. Um, I might argue that it would be um, more productive to seek ways to become less special than, uh, than to um, continually pay for uh, the, these imagined reasons of, of specialness. Um, key to this problem is, is uh, that content management isn't nearly enough, um, and, and I think that's important to say to this room, um, is that uh, one WordPress installation does not a news product make. Uh, you need more than that. Um, you need audience technology, uh, some way to take their money for looking at the stories, if that's in your model. You need advertising technology, some way to, uh, <laughs> some way to, to pay for the, the content that you're producing. And the instrumentation about that really needs to mature. And that's a place that we can, um, I think, really benefit from, from some scale. Uh, you know, Netflix decides what, um, they decide what kinds of new series to make or buy uh, based on uh, very complicated data science. Uh, and, and with few exceptions, we're not doing that in, in news media and the organizations uh, that can do it are only like the very biggest, and for most, for the most part, you could hardly cl classify them as local news. Um, I think special, some specialized editorial services. You know, I, I know of a lot of uh, newspapers that that now um, have a sort of central layout office. Um, I think that's worth scaling. Um, 
But I think it's risky uh, to have journalists and editors uh, covering local topics who aren't, aren't local, if that's obvious. The other thing I think is a uh, byproduct of the sort of uh, chase for attention um, is the, the tendency of uh, national networks of local news sites to build like a, a national news desk uh, that is going to you know, circulate evergreen lifestyle content and, and some um, sort of empty notion of, of national news, um, which is sort of not, not, not something that we need a lot more of. Like I said, the, my one little story was reprinted something like 16 times. Um, also, like the local marketing ground game, um, you know, if you're if you're building a uh, a news organization, getting it to the cut like the customers of one local market, I think requires more uh, more local context and connection um, than you could get if you're sort of doing it from New York City. Um, vertical integration, I, I, I think, looks like. Uh, uh, using Facebook and Google the way Netflix does, um, which is to buy ads and measure the results. Um, and, uh, or, or, uh, or treat your content as advertising and, and uh, measure the results like vis-a-vis -vis how, how many users you convert to paying subscribers. Um, I think it's, it's key to understand that vertical integration in this case means that you, ha like, you have to own the relationship with your audience rather than just tether all of your products together and kind of let them, let them snack wherever they are. Um, and as I, as I mentioned, uh, uh, tightly coupled workflows involving legacy products, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to have your, um, your website look like a newspaper. Um, one, and I, I, this is what I'm talking about, one, one key uh, opportunity here for an economy of scale is the fact that, that uh, the vast majority of, uh, of um, news articles are read on mobile phones, and the vast majority of mobile news websites look a lot alike. Um, so uh, but here, I'll, I'll show you one. Um, so you have the logo, uh, you know, opportunity to convert the, in that case, you know, an engagement opportunity, a little bit of revenue opportunity at the bottom, a photo, a big photo. Um, these are very, very different news outlets, and they all follow like a really similar um, UX pattern. Um, there's NBC's uh, New York TV station, um, it's the Miami New Tropic, uh, uh, which is uh, a Where By Us publication, a new, um, pretty cool actually, you should look into them if you're not, you're not familiar with them. Um, and then that's Infowars. Uh, so this, this UX pattern is like, has just become ubiquitous. We don't, and, and, and I, I guarantee you that, that these, four, these four publications all you know, built and paid for this stuff separately. Obviously it's not the biggest expense in the world. Obviously there are, there are, there are more costly things that you're doing in your news operation, but I think this is emblematic of the way that we could be you know, more cooperative as an, as, as an industry and that, that companies that own multiple news properties can do a better job of sharing. Um, this is what I'm saying, be less special. It's, it's, it's really hard. It's, it's, much, it's much harder than, uh, than, than making a, a hamburger menu icon. Um, but it, is, it will save a lot more money than, uh, than this. So, uh, so local equity, um, this is sort of the other part of the recipe here. Um, it says that readers have a stake in the news. Um, uh, you could be more particular and say that it means that readers have a vested financial interest in the outcome. Um, now, I would argue that readers already have a vested financial interest in the outcome because we know that local uh, uh, you know, cities in America that have better coverage of their local governments use their tax dollars more efficiently. Um, so there's a, essentially a built-in stake right there. Uh, but that, that's not, that's not, it's not felt. Uh, so it, this, this may be more like readers have to feel like they have something at stake. Um, and, and so if you sort of look at, at this, this set of needs here, this, the, these economies of scale and um, the need for local equity, you could kind of approximate a, a, a grid on which you could place any news organization. 
Um, so low equity, low scale is like, like I, I, you could call that the death quadrant. It's where, uh, uh, it's where independent news organizations pass through on their way to not, not existing anymore. Um, and you know, maybe it's also where some good independent news organizations start. It's, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're writing something, um, but your readers don't feel it, and, and you're not doing very much of it. Um, high equity, low scale is an interesting quadrant because it's, it's, it, there, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, and the opportunity for organizations here uh, is to find ways to, to put themselves in the higher, you know, towards the higher scale quadrant. Um, and it do, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be part of a newspaper chain in order to get some economy of scale. But it might mean that you're entering into an agreement with them, with other news organizations, to all purchase the same CMS and to share some costs of customization. And that's happening in newspapers, uh, even independently owned newspapers. Um, this is also true of a lot of like independent um, sort of uh, pure play or digital only um, news organizations. Like the, I would put the Texas Tribune in this quadrant um, as an, and probably as a, an example of what success could look like in, in this uh, in this quadrant. Low equity, high scale um, is the source of a lot. I think a lot of our problems um, because that's where the publicly traded. Uh, uh, media companies live for the most part. Um, and they, those are the ones that are most likely to be um, engaged in this sort of chase for attention. Um, and, and so they're all about, they're all about eyeballs. Um, whereas, uh, uh, and, you know, there's there some service paid towards, uh, towards memberships, but TV, I think TV station ownership groups can often fall in this category too. Uh, and TV stations aren't going to start um, charging readers for online access anytime soon. High equity and high scale, um, there are only a couple of, of examples, and, and, and civil is still very like, theoretical, but I think NPR is a good example of, of sort of what's possible um, when, you, when you get readers to feel uh, that they have a stake in, in your news organization. And true also, I think, of a lot of nonprofits, you know, you're not going to issue shares to your, uh, to your audience, um, but by, by having, you know, a, a membership program and mailing them a tote bag, um, you, de you develop a, a deeper relationship than you would if you're um, just showing them a nightly news broadcast on television. So this is a real risk of this high equity, or sorry, uh, low equity, high scale thing. Oh, it didn't even play. That's the, oh, there we go. I'm gonna, only gonna show you 30 seconds of this, and I assume most people have seen it. Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso, Las Cruces community. Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible, one-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sheriff. Yeah, that's enough. Um, oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just pour one out real quick for the Sinclair Tribune merger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that that was a happy happy accident that that, that happened um, uh, uh, today of all days. Um, uh, I'm running out of time here, so I want to just talk briefly about uh, uh, billionaire owners, which I spent a lot of time researching because um, there's some there's some interesting dynamics. Um, and uh, uh, I think that there's a sort of a natural. Uh, sort of hope and attraction of newspapers in particular to, uh, uh, you know, be acquired by a, a, a billionaire on a white horse. And in fact, I know of at least at least two editors of Metro Dailies that are um, like really trying hard to find a billionaire buyer for their uh, for their product. Um, uh, so that yeah, top that's uh, Glenn Taylor, who's the owner of the Star Tribune. Um, and un, you know, under his ownership, they've uh, uh, really made a lot of progress towards uh, uh, relying on their audience instead of on advertising. Uh, and then bottom is, uh, is Jerry Lindfest. Um, but some, billion, like, <laughs> some billionaire owners are, are uh, less, less good for their communities. Um, top that is Sheldon Adelson, who uh, I'm not gonna tell the whole story, but uh, secretly bought the uh, 
uh, newspaper in Las Vegas and um, then essentially ordered three of their reporters to uh, uh, investigate a judge who um, he had a casino business before. Um, and bottom is, is Jared Kushner, um, uh, who, you know, maybe not fair to him to put him in, in the, because the, he didn't own a Metro Daily, he owned a, a, a weekly that had more, more to do with lifestyle than, than politics. Um, but I, th I think this is the uh, uh, sort of key tension here. If, it's, if, if, it's, if we're wishing for a billionaire to buy our newspaper, um, like how do, we, how do we protect our integrity in case they turn out to be one of the bad billionaires? Um, and again, I think that there are technology solutions for this that, uh, that could be possible. Um, Building resilience, uh, uh, again, I think that you can kind of look at this, this equity scale qu uh, uh, quadrant and, and, and find a way to go up and to the right. Um, I think for local television, uh, it looks like um, learning about and engaging with, with audience. And um, for a long time, they will continue to provide free access to their websites to um, like literally just so they can undercut newspapers. Um, and uh, uh, they also, I'm, if, if you are really interested in local television, um, the Knight Foundation, and I think March or April released uh, a really long and interesting report on, on local TV. Um, one of their key findings was that outside of the top 25 media markets, um, a local TV station is the number one source for, for news. Top 25 markets still rely more on one newspaper than they do on any one TV station, but in the rest of the country, in other words, after the 25th market, maybe with a couple exceptions, TV stations are the dominant source of local news. Um, so I think as media professionals, we should, um, uh, we should, we should essentially help if, if this is where um, if this is where attention is going, if this is, if this is becoming a, a valuable part of the local news ecosystem, um, then we should ask ourselves what we can do to, to help them better serve their communities. Um, uh, NPR, I think, is in, is in pretty good shape because um, they can focus on, on you know, building their communities as a uh, means to motivate donations. Um, pure play or you know, digital only publications, um, I think really need to, to use their disruptive capacity to uh, uh, innovate um, not just the format of the news, but also um, like how the news is owned uh, and distributed. Um, newspapers, I think, are going to have the hardest time here. Um, I think that they've had the hardest time um, on the internet overall to date. Um, they really need to take steps to reduce dependency on advertising and um, convincing readers to pay. Uh, yes, yeah, same same basic idea. Um, so that's that, that, that's it. If again, if if you leave with one thing, I, I hope it's that um, that the the challenge, and really it is a, a tough challenge, um, is to find a way to scale your product beyond sort of just I'm building this one thing for my one local news website. To we're all building a better local news ecosystem everywhere, um, and that in whatever way it means that uh, that you can take this opportunity to, to build some equity, to give some equity to your, uh, to your audience. Uh, thanks. Questions? If there are any. Sure. One minute. Corey. How do you scale the product when there's for smaller newspapers. My hometown newspaper went from many, many pages to about eight, and there's the population so small there's not enough news to really produce content or a product that's valuable enough to support paper. Yeah, uh, that's a, a great question. I think that they should probably stop printing a newspaper. I mean, I, I know that that's like a, a, a very hard step, and there's a lot of um, sort of a community uh, ego built into having a printed newspaper that you could have delivered if you wanted. Um, but th this is, I think, another artifact of the attention economy. We have daily newspapers because people wanted to know the news every day. Um, but then, you know, along comes the internet, sort of steals the attention economy. Um, but we still have daily newspapers uh, because we still are earning some shred of revenue from uh, uh, from from print advertising. So I, I think, you know, if if we can break our dependence on advertising, we can, we only have to put stories up when they when they matter, um, and we're you know. Reporters are free to uh, 
uh, really focus on um, deep, important reporting rather than just filling a paper every day. I, I think for, a, especially for a small community, that's not, that, that can't be really a worthwhile endeavor. So you end up supporting fewer people, but with better content and better quality product. Yeah, I, yeah, I would argue that, that um, I would argue that's exactly what, that's exactly what they should do. I mean, maybe it, maybe it come, maybe there's some, some print artifact that comes out occasionally uh, uh, that, that could be interesting. I've, I've heard of a couple experiments of pure play websites where, um, you know, they're, they're going to make a quarterly chat book or something. Hey, Austin. Hey, Bert. Hey, Bert. <laughs> From Lenfest. Um, so we're in a room of people creating CMSs. I'm just wondering if you think about, about WordPress, and you said we should do things at scale. Don't everybody be special, unique flowers. But is WordPress built for local news? Like, are there things that it doesn't do? Or other, you know, closed systems people are turning to, like ARC or you know, Vox's new CMS that they're going to sell to people? I don't think, um, I don't think that, uh, that local news organizations should look too hard at Chorus. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm an open book. Yeah, uh, please, Daniel, it's Observer Software Employee. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I think that Word, Word WordPress is uh, 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 not just for local news, but, but for a lot of sectors. WordPress is a place to start. But like I said, it is not it is not a stand up digital news product on its own. Um, there are more places to scale, and I would argue more important places to scale in terms of like again audience technology conversion, um, revenue, payments. Uh, and with WordPress, there are ways to sort of couple things together, but uh, 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 as a news production tool, yeah, WordPress is almost ready for the job out of the box. Um, but as a news engagement tool, um, I think that you would, need, you would need a lot. So ARC has a, a, a essentially a microservice architecture that, that brings more of these components to the table. Um, with the flip side being that it's a, it's proprietary, it's uh, uh, you know it's it's owned by by Jeff Bezos, um, which is a, a, a turn off for um, for especially some big uh, local news organizations. Um, yeah, Davis. Hi, great talk, Austin. Really interesting. Um, so. I wanted to follow up on the advertising point. Um, advertising has been part of um, the American news economy since colonial times. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested if you think that this is a temporary retreat from advertising as a business model for news or a, a permanent um, uh, you know, uh, title change in how the news is paid for. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it may be a permanent change in how journalism is, is paid for. Um, can you um, differentiate between journalism and news? Well, I, I mean, we, li we live sort of on a spectrum, right, of, of um, media is much bigger, media is much broader than, um, than news, and news is maybe a little broader than, um, than, than journalism. Uh, uh, I, you know, I think that there are there are still some nat like some forms of national, uh, uh, especially like entertainment news that uh, is not going to lose advertising anytime soon. Um, I think uh, you know for local news, it is more likely that this shift will be permanent, and that's that's uh, I mean read the read the attention merchants really. Um, that's, I think, largely owing to just a total shift in the, in the, the whole idea of, of media. Now, maybe there's a, there's a form shift. Maybe that once we stop writing 300-word articles about everything that happens, um, there will be a more sort of internet-native, digital-native uh, news format that is more supportive of advertising. Um, but uh, uh, and and may, you know maybe ultimately uh, we will succeed in convincing Facebook to pay news organizations to really truly pay news organizations for engagement, um, 
or, or Google, for example, uh, uh, to pay a news organization for essentially like seeding their universe of information for free, uh, or it's free now. Uh, maybe that's a way back into the, the attention economy for, uh, for, for news, but I don't like the attention economy. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's always kind of sucked. So I, I, I hope that there will be an option, of, you know, 20 years from now, maybe there are some ad-supported formats, but I really hope that there are some that are, um, you know, purely audience-driven. We're telling you this because you need to know it, not so that we have another opportunity to uh, pop something in front of your eyeballs. Um, uh, sites like Nextdoor or you know Google Groups or Facebook, a Facebook group that's local. Man, I, 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 I sort of think that Nextdoor is like like more media than journalism. Um, I, I I haven't spent a lot of time with with Nextdoor, um, uh, but that's sort of like like purely ground up. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think that that there are there are fragments of this all over the place, but there's there's a whole lot of like uh, things like Nextdoor or uh, you know email lists for particular neighborhoods, um, but not uh, and then there are a lot of like journalism organizations that are sort of passing down news articles uh, from on high, uh, but not not enough in the middle. Um, I can't think of a great example that is um, that is doing both, and I don't know that it has to. I don't. I don't know that it has to look like a forum specifically. And it's that, like, a source of information. I mean, if you're if you're speaking to an audience, I mean, there's obviously an audience there. They're creating the content that they're all reading, so it would be a good source of packaging that together and and cleaning it up and fact checking it for redistribution. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's a, a, a core aim of, of Civil um, as, a, as a platform. Um, I, uh, I also you know, uh, would just shout out the Coral Project. Um, both, of their, both of their products, uh, Talk and Ask, are really built around um, engaging audiences. Um, also, Harkin, um, the uh, uh, startup that um, is trying to help news organizations better listen to their uh, to their audiences, um, but in terms of like like really successful, we did it, we made it. Um, local news, I can't, I can't, I can't really, I can't really think of any. Can, any, can anybody else? What is successful? Successful audience engaged, like like and. And and but but are they like really listening and engaging to their audiences, like giving their audience yeah. voice? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, my I, again, my my little bit of a quibble there is that uh, uh, this isn't this isn't yet really truly at scale. You know, a million bucks a year is is great, but that's not supporting the kind of like enterprise newsroom that most communities need. Well, one more, one more. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And, and um, you know, I, I think that, the, that on a national scale, the New York Times has actually done a, a, a pretty good job of delivering a solid experience and, um, um, and still having advertising. And I think I, I read earlier this week that there's something like two-thirds subscription now. Yep. Yeah, and I think that that's a, a, great, uh, a great place where local news organizations should seek some technology scale rather than all building their own version of the, uh, yeah, exactly. So I think we're 10 minutes over, um, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much again for, uh, for all this. Thank you.